Hi, it's David. I'm at a charging station here, so I have a little time, and I thought I'm going to make a little video. Uh, this time it's actually not a supercharger. I'm at a EVgo charger. Uh, there's no supercharger around here, but this one works fine. And it means I have a little more time because these EVgo chargers are not quite as fast as superchargers. Anyways, what I want to talk about today is actually kind of inspired by a video by um, uh, um, Eric. Uh, his channel is called News Coulomb. Um, I watch his stuff a lot because I think he's actually a very smart guy and has a lot of interesting topics he talks about and um, yeah, I find that interesting. So I'm going to put a link to his uh, channel down there. What he was talking about is um, basically he said don't let other people define how your driving habits are. And I think it's actually a very fair point and it made me think um, who is going to tell you this is the way you have to drive uh, a road trip for instance um, and this is how fast you should drive and this is you know how many stops you should make and all of that because it's always a discussion in terms of um, EVs uh, being not as good as ICE vehicles, ICE meaning internal combustion engine. So um, and I think he's totally spot on with that. Um, if you drive the way you want to drive, if you want to drive for seven hours straight um, yeah that's not gonna work with an EV and you can make that point but honestly not many people do that. Uh, I feel like that's an argument that's always brought up as a you know counter to EVs but in reality I don't think people drive that way. Anyway so um, what I did is I actually um, have a service called Tesla FI and what it does it logs all the data from the car um, in one minute sample so you have pretty much everything going on with your car uh, logged by the service and what's really good about the service it it presents in a really great way so you can see exactly uh, what trips you take and how many uh, well, how much time it took how much energy you used where you charged all of that it's really great I'm gonna make a separate video about it because um, I don't want to put too much into this video basically what I have is a complete log of how much I was driving how much energy I used how much um, charging I needed to do road trips and stuff like that so what I did I went in there and I picked four drives that I feel like represent anything from uh, best case scenario for an EV and worst case scenario for an EV and I want to uh, show you that and want to kind of you know bring that up as a real world example this is not theoretically uh, what if I drive that way then my EV looks really good this is you know drives that I've done in the past and I just pick them out you know again like from worst to best case scenario so I printed them out, I need to look at this. <clears throat> so as I said, there's four trips that I want to uh, show you and I'm going to put some uh, st um, stats on the screen here. Um, the first trip was uh, from our home in Orange County to Quartzsite. Um, my daughter had to do some school testing there. It was um, kind of an odd spot to do that, but you know, back then when we switched from her schools, that was the best way to do it. Anyway, so. It was 235 miles going one way from our home to uh, to there, and um, the total drive time back and forth was six hours and 30 minutes. Um, total charge time was only 30 minutes. And the reason is that I charged overnight. Uh, I drove to India where there's a supercharger. We didn't really need much charge, so we just stopped there for 14 minutes. Uh, we got a coffee at Starbucks. Um, and since we actually had to leave really early, we had to be there at nine o'clock. So I think we were there, at, I don't know, like at seven or something, I don't know. Uh, so we actually had like a little breakfast there, which we would have done anyways. So again, we charged it for 40 minutes, drove all the way to Quartzsite. I dropped her off, did, she did her testing and all of that. And I just um, put the car at the supercharger and let it charge all the way up again. There was plenty of time because I, you know, I was just waiting for her anyways. And so on the way back, we did the same thing. Uh, we stopped in India for like 14 minutes, 15 minutes, and then drove back home. So a total of uh, 470 miles of driving and 30 minute charging for that. So I think, um, and, and, and if I compare that to an uh, ICE vehicle, to a combustion engine, if we would have driven that with a combustion engine car, we would have stopped on the way there anyways for breakfast at Starbucks. Um, first of all, um, both my daughter and I love that, so we would have stopped there anyway for breakfast. It was the perfect uh, thing. On the way back, we might have driven all the way through without stopping. Um, so I'm not going to count that. So in other words, if we compare uh, my Tesla versus uh, an ICE vehicle, 
the total time difference would have been 14 minutes. So for driving a total of six and a half hours, 470 miles, a 14 minute difference, um, I think that's very reasonable. So um, that was the first case. The other trip that I wanted to bring up is a trip to San Jose and back. So when our oldest daughter was looking for colleges uh, two years ago, uh, she wanted to look at some colleges up north and we drove to San Jose and then actually a little bit around and looked at some colleges there. The total, time, uh, total miles we were driving is 962. So it's almost a thousand miles. That was a pretty long day. I think the total drive time, if I look at this, is 14 hours. So yeah, we, we left really early and we came back very late. Uh, it was pretty much a rough day, but um, you know, it kind of made sense to try to get everything done in one day instead of staying there and um, you know, kind of wasting another day there. So I wrote down the stats. The total charge time for that trip was four hours. We had seven supercharger stops each, like. 20 to 30 minutes. Um, comparing that to a gasoline car, we would have um, paid about $180 worth of gasoline. Since this car has free supercharging for life, uh, we didn't pay anything. Um, we did, we were lucky. Um, the campus that we looked at the most, spent the most time, two and a half hours, had a level two charger so I parked there and charged it didn't add many miles maybe 60 or something but you know I just take it you know while the car is sitting there it might as well charge so the total trip time with charging and everything was 18 hours um, now comparing that to a gasoline car we would have still driven 14 hours the drive uh, time is the same obviously on both vehicles I think we would have taken three stops anyways we would have stopped 30 minutes for breakfast um, on the way up because we left really early I think we left at 4 a.m. or something like that to get in time there for the first one so we would have stopped for breakfast we would have taken a lunch break one way or another and we would have taken a, a, a stop back home to get dinner um, as I said it was an 18 hour uh, total day uh, on the road so we would have taken we would have done those stops anyways and I'm also gonna add like an eight minute stop bathrooms <laughs> If you have girls, you know that they need to go to the bathroom here and there when they're on a road trip. So I'm just adding eight minutes in. And if I compare that to the uh, time I ta it's taken with the Tesla, the total difference for an 18 hour day driving a thousand miles um, is an hour and 52 minutes. So driving a Tesla uh, added an hour and 52 minutes to this uh, entire day and adventure. Again, um, considering that this is a huge trip and everything, I, I don't think that's uh, an unreasonable amount of time. Um, anyways, let's go to the third trip. So I guess I lied, it's not four trips, I picked only three trips. <laughs> um, the last trip I want to uh, show you guys is a trip that we take about twice a year. We still have a house up in Wisconsin, so we drive from LA to Wisconsin at least once or twice a year, usually in the summer and the winter for Christmas. The trip's about 2,200 miles, so that's, that's pretty long. If you would drive in one go, you know, uh, it would take 27 hours of driving. Of course, uh, nobody does that. Now, if you uh, drive it in this Tesla here, in this Model S, um, you would have to add between 11 and 13 hours of charging. Um, why is it between 11 and 13? Uh, it depends on the weather condition and the temperatures. If you're driving in the winter, you need more energy and thus you need a little more charging. And in the summer, you need less energy, so you get away with a little less charging. Um, if you take that trip in a gasoline car, um, you would probably spend about $300 worth of gas one way. Um, if you, and this is like a, a crazy scenario, but um, I still want to, you know, kind of play um, devil's advocate and do it that way. If you were to drive this in one go without, uh, you know, sleeping or, uh, at a hotel overnight, staying overnight, which is crazy because that means you need to drive for almost 48 hours, um, for almost two days, a little more than one and a half days. Um, which, by the way, I have done a few times. I always really had to rush back and, you know, because I had work. 
But anyway, so if you do that, you would, I would assume you, on those 2200 miles, you would have to stop about seven times, even if you drive with a gasoline car, you wanna go to the bathroom, you wanna eat something, you need to fill it up and so on. Each stop's about 20 minutes, so let's add three hours and 20 minutes uh, for the uh, gasoline car. And for the Tesla, we would add 13 hours, just wait worst case scenario, because we're driving in the winter. The time difference for this entire trip would be nine hours. So that's, that's a significant number. Um, but I think in reality, that's not really how most people would take the trip, and that's not how we do it. What you usually do, it's 2,200 miles. So um, what you usually would do, I think a normal person, they would drive one day, stay overnight, drive another day, stay another night, and then finish the trip on the third day. That's still a little over 700 miles a day. That is, um, depending on how fast you drive, a nine hour day of driving. Um, so I think that's what a normal person would do. And then you would offset some of the time for charging at the hotel overnight. You would. Uh, most likely take a hotel where you have charging up ability so you just uh, roll in empty there uh, charge overnight and start with a full battery in the morning so uh, those two nights you wouldn't have to charge anywhere um, because it charges overnight so that would bring out the t bring, bring down the time a little bit so yeah those are the three cases um, as you can see I don't think the time difference is all that much Obviously, for that very long trip, it adds up. Um, but I have to say also that the stats that I've uh, taken are from an older model S85. Um, the car is great, and I love it, and it's really amazing. It comes with lifetime free supercharging. But in terms of charging and the charging speed, Tesla has developed uh, quite a bit over the years. If you were to drive those trips um, with a current let's say a, a long range Model 3, um, you would take, you can cut the charge time at about half. The reason is that number one, the Model 3 can charge faster. Uh, it maintains a very high charge rate for a long time. Uh, this car only peaks and then kind of the charge rate drops down. So overall it charges much slower. And also the Model 3 is much more efficient. So it uses less energy which means you have to charge less energy uh, at a supercharger. And if you combine these two things, then uh, you have about twice uh, the charge speed. You know, you spend half the time at a supercharger. So for the worst case scenario, that trip from uh, LA to Wisconsin, the nine hours of, uh, would come down to, you know, four and a five hour, four and a half hours of charging with a Model 3. So, worst case scenario, you're spending four and a half hours more than you would in an ICE vehicle. But again, that's without uh, stopping at a hotel. So, I, I think these examples show that um, you're not really spending that much more time in an, in an EV, even on a road trip, you know. On, on shorter road trips, anything between like 200, 300, maybe up to 400 miles, I don't think the difference really is, is anything... Uh, it, it, there is almost no difference. I mean, it's a little bit. Yes, you have to stop and charge, but um, you would stop anyways. I mean, it's not like you were trying to drive all the way through. I actually did that experiment uh, just recently. Uh, our daughter ended up at a college in Tucson, Arizona, which is about 500 miles from our home. And so at one point I was picking her up and, and driving her back and um, I took our truck I filled it up as a huge gas tank so it can make the trip all the way there without stopping and that's what I did I just wanted to try it out okay so I can make it let's go all the way let's do the whole thing in one go so it took me seven hours to drive there the 500 miles so I got a good uh, average but um, it was not fun yes you can do it but uh, it is not fun everything hurt I had a headache my bladder was about to explode I was hungry, I was, I was stressed because, you know, when you drive for seven hours straight, you can't take your eyes off the road. You have to be focused and you don't get a rest at all. It has no um, autopilot or anything, you know. So um, it was an interesting experiment and I have to say, I, I don't want to do it that way. That's, that's, just, uh, that's just nuts. So um, if people argue, 
well, they can drive all the way through in one go and up to 500 miles or even more, then um, good for you. Uh, uh, that's not me. That's not how I want to do it. A few other things I want to mention that kind of um, touch on the same subject. Um, number one, which I haven't mentioned, I think it's fair to mention, uh, on these examples, I usually planned on arriving with almost a dead battery. So I only charge as much as I need to get to my destination. Because uh, whether I drive home or uh, at my destination, I have a charger there. So um, I, I can do that. Um, but I'm counting on having a charger at my destination. If you go to, let's say, uh, you know, a national park or whatever, usually they don't have chargers there. Or some other place where you don't have the ability to charge you have to charge a little bit longer at your previous, let's say, supercharger or fast charger, wherever you are, and then add that to the time. So it's something to consider. I just want to make sure that this is, um, I think most of the time you're going to have uh, charging abilities at your final destination if you're an EV owner, but sometimes you don't. Um, if you drive into a city that you don't know or you drive into uh, the wild and nature and there is no charging, then you have to add a little more charge time. The other thing I want to mention, um, even though 300 miles of range, which we have currently in a modern Tesla, for instance, and other EVs that are coming out soon, um, I think that isn't the end of it. I believe that, um, I actually strongly believe that larger batteries do make sense um, for, for several reasons. Number one, if you have a larger battery, you can uh, you can charge it faster just because a larger battery can take more power. Um, the other thing is it just gives you a little more wiggle room if you don't have a charger or if you want to skip one. Let's say you're driving with little kids and they finally fell asleep. You don't want to stop and wake them up. You just want to like, all right, let's keep going for another hour. Um, if you have little kids, you understand what I mean. Um, there, there are certain situations where, you know, charging is a little bit of an inconvenience and if you have a bigger battery just makes it easier you know makes life a little bit easier so I think there is a good uh, there's good arguments in, in general for a larger battery same is true for like for instance driving in the winter where you have 20 to up to 30 percent higher energy usage and then all of a sudden your 300 miles range uh, comes down to like 200 or something like that and also another thing you should consider if the car says it has 300 miles of range, uh, especially when you're in a road shape, you don't want to push it too hard and going like all the way down to zero when you arrive. And at the same time, since the charge speed kind of drops, if you go, uh, let's say over 80% on your battery, you kind of want to stay to get a fast charge rate. You want to stay between 10 and 70%. So you basically only, using the core 60% of your battery, which means you only have 60% of the range. So, you know, the, the, the range that a car has on paper isn't really a realistic number. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that play into it, which, you know, end up, you end up having a little less range. So, uh, again, for, for all these reasons, I believe that having larger batteries is definitely a good thing and it will come once the prices drop. But anyways, I wanted to show you guys that even today with this car, which is five years old now and has uh, almost 200,000 miles, um, the difference between this one and a gasoline car isn't that much. It's really not that much of an inconvenience to drive it. Um, some of my family members will disagree, but um, I just put out the numbers and you can decide for yourself. All right, that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.